Understand that Mark Alvarado had a dance with death. Understand, just like Johnny Tapia, right? If you watch that documentary, understand that Mike Alvarado was caught chasing the dragon. You understand? Mike Alvarado is a very tough fighter, right? And he's he started off as a wrestler back in high school and made the transition to boxing. And he carried a long way. He was like undefeated, like 29 and 0 before his first loss to Brandon Rios, right? In the midst of beating Prescott. Anyway, for the sake of this video, man. I'm just gonna break down a couple of his resi uh, his resume a little bit. Talk about what the future holds from. And first of all, what the future, man? The future holds pretty interesting for Mike Alvarado. The only thing that it's a roadblock is the fact of his age. And he's taking a lot of punishment with a lot of fighters that with bad promotion, it, it, it's it's all about ma uh, matchmaking, right? And Alvarado has been matchmaked very difficult. He just had a very difficult time. Every, since Prescott, from Prescott, he fought Herrera, Brandon Rios twice, Ruslan, Juan Manuel Marquez, and then Brandon Rios again. I mean, that, that's just a recipe to destruction, especially for a fighter in the way fan-friendly Mike Alvarado fights. Anyway, the future is very interesting for Mike Alvarado. I wish him nothing but the best. He can fight a lot of fights out there. Um, what you see, the way it, it all, again, it all comes down to matchmaking and how well properly you care for a fighter. Um, Mike Alvarado also has to make the right decisions. He's a father. He's got to look out for his interests, his money, etc. But there's a lot of fighters that, you know, he can fight like Jesse Vargas. All, I like a lot of fighters, you know, uh, Timothy Bradley. But those are, you know, high elite fighters. He's got to work himself from scratch, gain a couple of good momentum fights, and then eventually start avenging those losses and start, you know, making a name for himself and making a comeback for Quest to World Champion. Anyway, I'm gonna just break down his resume from now on. So, Mike Alvarado, like Gabe Rosado, have to be very meticulous, very careful in their demeanor and the way they approach boxing from this point on, especially because of their age. They took in many putazos back in the day, you know what I'm saying, giving great help, great fights, great tough fights, you understand? But their face just doesn't hold up anymore, right? But anyway, back on Mike Alvarado's trying to make a comeback. He's saying he's already like, he wants to fight out 147. He, he's like 15 pounds over and it's, he's good. He's training. He's doing really well. He's going back to the rehab and everything because, you know, just like the movie Blow with Johnny Depp and Penelope Cruz, I mean, this was this was the life that Mike Alvarado was living, you know, having fun with the friends and stuff like that and just enjoying the pleasures of life. But now that he's got his family and he's got a kid and stuff like that, now he's got his agenda back on streak and he's willing to make a comeback, willing to uh, make some noise and, and willing to just... You know, come back and do something and cement his legacy because he's not content with the with the three losses in a row that he's got, four losses in his past five fights. But anyway, I'm gonna break down Mike Alvarado's resume, right? And uh, it's been a pretty good resume, man. It's pretty solid. It could definitely be better, right? So I'm not gonna start when he was like 15 and 0 when he was undefeated. I'm gonna talk about his first match with Brady's Prescott. Now Prescott, at this time, um, you know, he lost three times, right? But Prescott was still very, he was a very live dog. And Prescott in this fight was smashing Mike Alvarado. I mean, he was beating them, like pitching a shutout. Mike Alvarado was doing good. He was landing some blows, doing a little bit of here, hitting some uppercuts, hitting some body. But understand, Prescott was smashing on Mike Alvarado. You understand? Just, just simply smashing on him. But Mike Alvarado in the 10th round buzzes Prescott with a See a sick ass uppercut, boom, and just loosens that dude's spinal cord all the way down to his legs. And Brady's press kind of tries to get up, and Mike Alvarado finishes it. It was maybe one could say a premature stoppage, and my memory serves me right. You understand? But nevertheless, Mike Alvarado from that point still retained his uh, because he was losing that fight, he still remained undefeated. And then comes on bigger and better things. Then he after that, he fought Mauricio Herrera. And in this fight, in my the way I look at it, it was a 10 rounder, I believe. I had a 6-4, like, unanimously 6-4, even though you're like, oh, whoa, is, that's that's close. Like, I like 6-4, hands down, you know, even 7-3, um, which is a very good fight because Herrera is a very good, solid boxer, right? Even though he's not blessed with good power, you know, uh, I felt, in my point of view, that, you know, Mike Alvarado beat him easily. And then it was a battle between just, I mean, between my boy Brandon Rios, man, two undefeated dudes. And Brandon Rios in this fight, Mike Alvarado versus Brandon Rios was one hell of a fight. I don't know if it was a championship fight the first time they met, you understand, but it was great. I remember watching that shit happen in Carson, California, and uh, Mike Alvarado and, and Rios were, dude, it was, I mean, they weren't making the comparison to Mickey Ward versus Arturo Gotti for no reason. These motherfuckers came 
and they threw it down. Like, even though these dudes were, like, meeting up each other at a strip club and drinking beers and having good times and playing, you know, uh, video games with saltine crackers with cheese dip. I mean, these dudes fucking threw it down. Like, they hated each other. And they did it. They were, like, fucking best friends and partying and clubbing and slapping bitches' ass. But, hey, they threw it down, man. And uh, Brandon Rio just got the better of him, man. It was just good back and forth fight. I don't even want to break that fight down. And then after that, there was a rematch, right? Just extremely right after. And um, it was a rematch. And what can I say, man? Uh, they did good. They went the distance. Um, it started off good, you know, hitting and moving, right? Um, he was incorporating a lot of stick and move uh, boxing skill. Uh, Mike Alvarado, he was more on the back foot. He, he was very precise in the times he wanted to exchange, right? He wouldn't just sit there and just go to toe-to-toe, -to -toe. though he did, but he resorted more to boxing from the outside, toe-to-toe -to -toe in the early rounds, and then started jabbing and picking his one-twos and picking Brandon Reels apart from the distance, and that's how Mike Alvarado avenged that loss. Then after that, man, after that, this is Ruslan Pavonikov, and again, Mike was doing pretty good until Ruslan caught him, you understand? He caught him, Mike Alvarado, I don't know, man. He just seemed a little sluggish, but Ruslan is just a dog, just a mean dog just coming at, at you. He's... He's soul hunting you, you understand? He's gonna suck that soul out of you. And that's what Ruslan did, and that's what Ruslan does, and he did this against Mike Alvarado. Now, not a shit on nobody or Bob Arum, but look, you cannot pin Mike Alvarado, man. This is how you deteriorate a fucking fighter, you understand? Tough ass fight with Prescott, then a pretty good fight with Herrera, then you throw him up with another wolf in Brandon Rios, again with Rios, and again with, and with another guy as Ruslan. I mean, this is how you fuck up a fighter. And Mike Alvarado has been fucked up. And then on top of that, man, if that shit wasn't even enough, he fights Juan Manuel Marquez, you understand? Juan Manuel Marquez right after. That dude gets knocked down, sent out of the ring, comes back up, hits and knocks down Marquez on a flash knockdown. And then after that, he fights Brandon Rios. Now, Mike Alvarado was obviously fighting those fights for money, aside from, you know, fighting good competition and stuff like that, because Mike Alvarado was good. But, I mean, there's no tune-ups, no, you know, refresh him, get him an easy fight, built him up. I mean, this is how you know Bob Arrow was fucking up Mike Alvarado to a certain degree. I mean, look at Terrence Crawford. Gets in a tough fight with Gamboa, right? And then he fights, like, I don't know, Beltran. And then some easier fights in between, like, Tomas Delorme and Derry Jean. That's how you properly built up somebody. But you throw... Rios, Rios, Prescott, Ruslan, Juan Manuel Marquez, and then Rios again. I mean, this is how you destroy and brain damage a fucking fighter. This is how you lead a fighter to destruction, to self-destruction, self-medication, and fucking playing with his nose. You understand? That was some fucking bullshit for Bob Arum. Anyway, I'm a big fan of Mike Alvarado, man. I hope no this is a fan nobody, uh, especially my boy Mike. I love Mike. And I want, and I wish him well, I wish him nothing but good health, man. But he's got to make solid decisions. Look, he's already given us a lot of fights. I'm not saying don't make him come back and take tough fights. No, I'm saying avenge those losses. Try to get back on the winning streak, right? And try to fight Ruslan Pavonikov. But at the same time, you just, you couldn't be fighting those dudes back to back to back. That's like, that's just some mean shit. You understand? That's how you just break down your soul. This is how you put yourself uh, six feet deep real quick. Anyway. Mike Alvarado is coming back with a comeback. I wish him nothing but the best. I hope to see him again with these tough fighters. And uh, shit, man, maybe even a quadruple fight with Brandon Rios, but not off the back, though. But because, I mean, again, that's how you kill these fighters mentally and physically, um, especially that brain. The brain is, you know, the brain. That, that shit's where it's at. I'm a dysfunctional human being. You slurred speech. You can't think properly. You know, you start tasing yourself to sleep. Anyway... Mike Alvarado is a man. That dude from Mile High can surely bang it out.